feeling is flowing against a callous government which cuts taxes for the greedy and cuts jobs for the needy, a government which sells industries and services to their rich friends at bargain prices, industries that were built by us, which belonged to us, made wealth for Britain and served our people, being sold to her friends. The government has been exposed not only as greedy, but as corrupt and incompetent. The Westlands farce has been followed by the Austin Rover fiasco and the Leyland General Motors debacle. National pride and national independence has been sacrificed on the altar of the almighty dollar. Mrs. Thatcher, whether selling our assets or slavishly following Reagan's Rambo Road, has done more to undermine British sovereignty than any Prime Minister since Neville Chamberlain. Her support for the American Libyan adventure has dealt a deadly dollar blow to one of our few healthy industries, that of tourism. It's not surprising that American tourists don't fancy visiting a country made unsafe by American bombs. In my job, both as chairman and as a general secretary of a union, I go abroad and I meet not only trade unionists, but diplomats. And there's one constant theme. Why does Britain have no national view? Why no desire to control its own industry? Why no loyalty to defend British jobs? Why do we act just like an offshore island? And those are questions that we in the trade union movement have to answer to. No self-respecting country would put itself up so blatantly for sale. We have to remind ourselves that without control of our major industries, we will lose control over our own country. Look at it this way. Even now, over 20% of manufacturing output in Britain is controlled by American multinationals. And that is not counting the Japanese intervention and many others from other countries. There is no political independence Congress without economic independence.